Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the 5th episode of Carolyn Tuesday. Now last episode, I guess they were making like a PV or something, and they had a little director robot thingy try to help them out who did a terrible job at it. Yep, the end result was an absolute travesty, an amazing travesty, but a travesty nonetheless. And Gus, he got the help of his ex-wife, and that's how we were introduced to her, Mari. And she helped out with it as best she can, but like I said, it was it was destined to fail. And, you know, he may or may not want to get back together with her, but that doesn't seem to be going to happen because he's going to get remarried, I guess, to Anne. So that that might be over for him, which is a little bit sad, but he seems to just be happy that she's happy, and that's, that's nice, I guess. So, uh, yeah, let's just get into it and see where we go from here, you know? What do we do now? So, three, two, one, play. Good thing you keep reminding me, because otherwise I would just forget. Uh, I just can't stop thinking about that video they made. It was just so amazing. So the opening song is straight up called Kiss Me. I mean... You can't get any less subtle than that, really, with like, with uh, with letting you know that there's going to be some degree of romance in this show. I can't help but notice the dog is not clapping. Did you not enjoy it? What's wrong with you, you canine? Oh, wow. Uh, oh, it's just a flashback. I was wondering why they look so freaked out. Yeah, that, that did not go well. A lot of things did not go well. <laughs> uh, every breath you take. Uh, you don't seem very focused, especially you, Carol. Doesn't mean we give up. Doesn't have sleeves. Oh, that could be fun. I really do like the shorts that Carol wears. <laughs> Steadily, that's a key word, I guess. Yeah, well, you should do it now then. Yeah, people sometimes chase me. Legendary debut performance. Well, that comes next. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Well, you know someone. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> so much less faith. Hefner. Okay. Is he nicer than the last big shot we tried to meet? <laughs> It'll be silly. Who needs appointments? Yeah, I really... I don't know about guests sometimes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, we'll just make more. Somebody forget to pay their power bill.
Well, that's what happens when you don't pay your bill. Yeah. A Tuesday, do you have any money like in your socks or something? Or another article of clothing? Oh yeah, they're still trying to get Tuesday, aren't they? <laughs> That's such a nice picture. <laughs> I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah, humans are pretty outdated. Not as cute as you. Okay. Kanban Musume. That was a good job. If you, you know, can do it. Do AI pets need walks? <laughs> we never take him for walks, do we? <laughs> that poor neglected AI pet. And what are you saying? <laughs> uh, I remember that, the, the machine. That was some fun times. Oh, background checks. Those are never good. Oh, that's not surprising at all. Okay, that may be a bit worrying. <laughs> a little bit. Of course not. Why would why would I ever do such a thing? Oh, bringing it back on her. Martian androgyny. <laughs> well, someone's sweating. Yeah, now that we got that out of the way, let's go back to work. My marionette appraised. <laughs> the marionette obviously being Angela. But I thought appointments were didn't matter. This is what happens when you try to show off. Be like, yeah, I don't need no appointment. Don't be silly. Poof. <laughs> what the face has got going on there? I'm hugging your robots. What does it look like I'm doing? A few broken bones later. A little bit. A little bit. I mean, that's a good point. <laughs> Quite oppressive. Of course. It's all about that business. Mars Lounge. Yeah, that was fun. Well, you know. Yeah, I got these couple girls I know. They kind of want money, so can you help with that? One of which is being tracked down. Are you falling asleep back there, Angela, or or doing something very lewd? <laughs> One of the two. Guess so. We will find out. Maybe. Oh, was well, certainly one of the more interesting characters in this show. 
Oh, those things look so cool. I want one. I don't know what it does. I don't care. I want one. <laughs> Join forces. What is this evil supervillain talk? He plans on mind controlling people with music. I finally figured it out. 12 million Wulong? You know how much money that is? Because I sure don't. Well, this one, has a, this one has a nice belly, so. Confidence. The belly? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> You're not understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth. That sounds like a great opportunity for a debut to me. Well, no, it's called a debut for a reason. Yeah, we all gotta start somewhere. Have faith in, in him. Well, I guess so. Don't look at it like that. Well, I, I assume you already have plenty of food on the table, let's be honest. A little bit of reckless, recklessness never hurt anyone. Well, that's not true, but do it anyway. Wasn't quite able to read that last word, it either said suit or slut. I'm going to assume the former. Well, this meeting could have gone better. <laughs> well, that didn't work either. Hey, I didn't do nothing. Meanwhile, Roddy's still trying. Yeah. Well, then give them your tick of approval. I think you'd like them. They're nice and cute. I don't see why you wouldn't like them. Yeah, look at this cute picture. That'll convince you. You didn't even, you didn't even look. Yeah. Not being very cooperative either. Ears, eyes, you know. <laughs> I heard them with my heart. <laughs> okay, see, this is how the other conversation should have went, but this is going decently here. Okay, good job, Roddy. I, I knew you were more worth having faith in than Gus. We've seen why. You get results. Every breath you take. I don't believe that's true, but... Not bad at all. <laughs> Definitely not bad. Well, that's nice. Wish I could just go to a room and sing and get 12 million. That'd be great. Well, that's probably a mistake. I have a feeling. <coughs> oh, that's such a cool elevator. 
I thought so, but I'm less willing to praise you now. Well, that's definitely true. We have to give you some more personal time with our personal machine. Yeah, what do you think was going to happen? It's nothing to sneeze at. Quite a large sum. Yeah, I bet. And become a star. Who's that girl back there? She looks nice. Open time, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm looking for this girl. Have you seen her? <laughs> I was waiting for him to say something like that. I'm not trying to capture her or anything for any weird purposes. Just bringing her back home. Are you going to sell her out? Tell this guy to take a hike. That works too. Carol's home. That's better than nothing. That's what matters. It's more than good enough for their first. That's a good idea. New idea for new song for your first debut. I mean, yeah, we still haven't solved that problem. Makes sense. I know, right? What a failure, failure of a manager. In your opinion. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what you're even trying to say anymore. Well, it's because the best thing about them is that they're the main characters. Okay, so that's that's our job. Looks like Looks like Carol is going for the walking and then Tuesday is going for the Kanban Musume. The luggage. I know the feeling. <laughs> Don't break it. <laughs> yeah, I I believe that. Well, I guess it could be, but that's a little bit less uh, less pleasant to think about. Oh. Oh. Okay. Nice of her. I approve. And <laughs> here we go. Of course, you gotta hold up your phone and record it. It's a future after all. That's just what you call yourselves. And title drop, by the way. Yeah, here we go. Let's see you impress the audience, that huge audience. Man, this is such a nice singing voice.
Uh, such a soothing voice. Actually getting chills again. I want these girls to sing me to sleep at night. That would be so great. I could just fall asleep listening to this. It's so soothing. So do you like it? Are you impressed? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> that that was a very nice song. It really really uh really pierces your heart, doesn't it? I can't really think of a better way to put it, but it just especially the line that's like there's no need to be sad. For some reason that line in particular just really gets to me. Every time they said it, man, I just Almost felt like tearing up a little bit. I don't know why. I would go to their concert. I definitely would. But yeah, whenever they sing, <coughs> the subs are in a different spot than usual. So I have to kind of manually switch between them so you can see it, like, down here. I kind of messed it up a little bit. My bad, but... Because I switched back to the regular dialogue too late than I should have. I would have been okay with them singing this song for the performance as well. But a new song I think was the right way to go. They really do look so different, don't they? Like complete opposites, but that's kind of the point. Do is they kind of looking like a doll. And Kara looking like uh I don't know what a good way to put it would be, but you know what I mean. Like a regular person, I guess, is the best thing I came up with. So, yeah. That was the fifth episode of uh, Carol and Tuesday. And <coughs> the focus of this episode was we were kind of addressing a couple of our problems, one of which is money. The power's been cut, we need to get money. So we basically looked at ads and stuff to figure out exactly what we could do. We looked at like dog walking, Kanban Musume, you know, that sort of thing. So they did it. AI, AI, and AI pet walking specifically, which I guess is interesting. And they did bring up the subject that AIs have kind of taken over a lot of jobs, so not a lot of jobs for humans to do. But that, you know, that brings up an interesting point as well. Like, I mean, surely there's still as many people as before, right? So... Do most people just not have jobs? Like, what is the average person's job like if all if a lot of the simple, you know, tasks are done by AI? Like, I don't know. I'm just kind of curious what the, what the employment situation is because I know this takes place on Mars, so they might have less people in general than Earth. But even so, wouldn't they? Earth and Mars have similar level of AI and stuff. I don't know. I'm just kind of curious exactly what humans' role is because we keep hearing about that. Oh well, I mean, most of the, this is mostly done by AI, so. 
what are you a normal person even doing here? Like, what do people really do now? Or is it just a lot of unemployment? If there is a lot of unemployment, wouldn't that be a really bad thing? Like, I'm just kind of curious exactly how all that works. It's because there's not really a lot of, you know, obviously big important roles in being a CEO and stuff. Obviously, that would be for humans, but not a lot. Not everyone can be, you know, can own their own club or be the the owner of their own business or whatever. So I'm just kind of curious about that. There's something that I got, just, you know, curious about this episode. I've been kind of curious about that for a while, but it really came to mind on this episode. So Carol and Tuesday were working on the money thing. Then you got Angela, who's still working with Tao. The mother's still kind of concerned about him, finding out that he used to be like a neuroscientist and you know, working with mind control and stuff. A little bit concerned about her daughter, I guess, understandably so. And then he mentioned something about her. I don't think I quite understood what he was talking about there. Maybe I can go, go back to that. Uh, okay, he said, I took the liberty of doing some research on you too. She's like, huh? I know that you exhibit Martian androgyny. I don't quite understand what he meant by that. Uh, like, I don't, I don't quite get that. That you exhibit Martian androgyny. That, and then that you've been arrested for assault twice in the past. Okay, that I get. Uh, I'm a little bit curious about the context of that, but I don't get quite how that first one's a problem. Or the first name really means androgyny. Like, I know what that means. Isn't that like, uh, I don't know, like, kind of in the middle of looking like a guy and girl? I don't, I don't know. I don't think, I've never actually looked up the word androgyny before. I guess I could do that right now. You know, why not? Androgyny meaning wrong button. Okay. Partly male and partly female in appearance of intermediate sex. So I, I don't know what he's trying to say here. That's a weird way to call her a tranny. I don't, I don't get it really, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, it got to her, so uh, that he turned things around is kind of the point of the scene, I guess. I still don't understand the word, the word, the word Martian in that context, but I guess it doesn't really matter. There's on Mars, I guess that's the only real relevance to that. But uh, I don't know. I'm just a little bit confused with that bit. That's all I'm kind of really saying. But she got to sing and apparently impress the one guy enough to get the twelve million. So. Good for Angela, I guess. And Carol and Tuesday actually got to have their debut in the One Girls Club. Although Gus tried to get work something out with uh, Hedge, Hedge, what was his name? Hefner? I don't know. Like, you know, uh, Hugh Hefner. But uh, that did not work out at all. But Rodney, Roddy, who's actually good at getting things done, talked to What's Her Face and got them to play like an opening for. At her club, so that worked, and I guess they seem to be pretty happy with it. However, I think I saw the brother in that club as well. Uh, so. Yeah, I think I think he was there. I don't know. It's hard to tell because it showed him right after. Yeah, I think that was supposed to imply that he was in there too. It's a little bit hard to tell, but uh, if that's the case, that means he found her, which is a bad thing. <laughs> so. But yeah, it was a little bit, a little bit subtle about it, so I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out one way or the other next episode. But yeah, the, as far as their actual performance goes, I thought it was great. I thought the song was amazing. They sang it well, as always. No surprise there. And just as a lot of the songs do, it really just touches you in the heart, kind of like what Roddy said, you know, when he was, you know, pitching for them, you know, when he just like put his hand up to his heart and all that. I, I get what he meant, you know. I definitely get it. Their, their music does kind of do that to you. So I get it. I get it. But anyway. Really good episode. Things seem to work out pretty well for Carol and Tuesday for the most part, even if the whole Gus, what his, the thing he was trying to do didn't quite work out. Still not proven to be the best manager, exactly, but, uh, you know, he tries. That's what matters. Things, as long as things continue to go all right, hopefully we can get the power back on soon enough now that they do kind of have jobs. Hopefully that, that works out. So, yeah, good stuff. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Snoky for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment, because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.